this week on ICN. The stories you should have heard, but didn't. Washington rams through health care bill. Now what? Struggling states likely to send out tax refunds eventually. Federal Reserve Chairman talks about eliminating bank reserve requirements. Senators pushing for biometric national identification cards. Those stories and more next on Informed Citizen News. Hello and welcome to ICN, Informed Citizen News, March 21st, 2010. The health care bill has passed and will be signed by President Obama. Since this story is heavily covered by the mainstream media, ICN will focus on what happens next. Twelve states either have or are filing lawsuits that claim that it's unconstitutional for the federal government to require citizens to purchase medical insurance. Virginia has gone so far as to pass a state law that makes it illegal for the federal government to mandate the purchase of health insurance. Under the health care bill by 2014, most Americans would be required to have health insurance or pay a fine. Most employers would also be required to provide coverage to their workers or pay a fine of $2,000 per worker. Under the law, every individual and most businesses are required to report on their IRS tax returns whether they have purchased or provided the required level of coverage and disclose to the IRS which months, if any, in which they failed to do so. In order to carry out its new monitoring and enforcement duties, the Congressional Budget Office estimated that the IRS will need $10 billion in additional funds. Funds which were not made available under this health reform bill. Irony of the week, WikiLeaks, a website that posts leaked documents from whistleblowers and insiders, just posted a classified document produced by the U.S. Army on the threat posed by WikiLeaks to the U.S. Army. The government's concern is that current employees or moles within the Defense Department or the U.S. government are providing sensitive or classified information to WikiLeaks. To stop this, the 2008 report had suggested a campaign to expose and punish those who leaked to the site. Notable past leaks have included the 238-page U.S. military manual detailing operations of the Defense Department's Guantanamo Bay Detention Facility and a CIA manual for operating rendition flights, which involved undocumented detainees who were kidnapped in various locations and flown to countries outside the United States for interrogation and torture. A bill is progressing through the Idaho legislature to allow citizens to pay state taxes with the official state silver medallion. The news comes just a month after a South Carolina legislator introduced a bill seeking to ban Federal Reserve currency altogether and replace the greenback with gold or silver coins. Quoting the text of the Idaho bill, the intent of this bill is to use the abundant silver resources of the state of Idaho to create a means whereby the people of Idaho can pay their taxes to the state using silver mined from the ground of Idaho, processed in Idaho, and finally minted into a medallion in Idaho. This will create mining jobs while giving the people a means to store their wealth in precious metals that is immune from the effects of inflation while complying with the mandates of our federal constitution. Since states are not allowed to mint their own money, these silver medallions would fluctuate in price against the U.S. dollar. States struggling with budget shortfalls are looking to hold on to your tax refund until it is convenient for them to return your money. For example, New York hit with a $9 billion deficit may delay $500 million in refunds to keep the state from running out of cash. Hawaii's Department of Taxation says some residents may not see state income tax refunds until the end of August. California's massive budget shortfall of more than $20 billion last year prompted it not only to delay tax refunds, but to issue billions of dollars in IOUs to vendors and others who were owed money. Try telling the state that you're running a budget deficit and you'll pay taxes when your cash flow improves. The U.S. Department of Education posted a request for proposal with the intent to purchase 27 Remington 12-gauge shotguns. It begs the question, why would the U.S. Department of Education need shotguns? So YCN asked. The Department of Education responded. The Office of Inspector General is the law enforcement arm of the U.S. Department of Education and is responsible for the detection of waste, fraud, abuse, and other criminal activity involving federal education funds, programs, and operations. 
So in other words, these shotguns are for the DOE's internal police force that investigates themselves. Federal Reserve Chairman Bernanke provided testimony before Congress last month and stated, the Federal Reserve believes it is possible that ultimately its operating framework will allow the elimination of minimum reserve requirements, which impose costs and distortions on the banking system. Apparently, these reserve requirements currently in force are a nuisance and act as limitations on the current fractional reserve system. Bernanke did not comment on the potential renaming of the Federal Reserve should reserve requirements be eliminated from the banking system. After a year-long investigation, a court-appointed bank examiner produced a 2,200-page report which details the suspect activities that led to the Lehman Brothers' bankruptcy. The report provides powerful evidence that Lehman executives were involved in balance sheet manipulation by implementing an arcane accounting procedure called Repo 105. This accounting procedure masked the bank's true financial condition from investors and regulators. Repo 105 is a complicated accounting maneuver where a short-term loan from the Federal Reserve is classified as a sale. The cash obtained through this so-called sale is then used to pay down debt, allowing the company to appear to reduce its leverage by temporarily paying down liabilities just long enough to reflect on the company's published balance sheet. After the company's financial reports are published, the company borrows cash and repurchases back its original assets. The loans were given by the Fed to Lehman in exchange for worthless mortgage-backed securities that would buy Lehman Brothers some extra time. The details of the report are quite incriminating for the major players involved. The question is, will anyone do anything about it? Senators Graham and Schumer have proposed a new national ID card that they describe as a fraud-proof Social Security card. They claim the national ID card, which would store the cardholder's biometric information, will eliminate the possibility of illegal immigrants from obtaining jobs in the U.S. Civil liberties advocates point out that a national ID is only another way for the government to monitor the American people. The Real ID Act passed in 2005 was another attempt by government to track Americans. The Real ID requires state motor vehicle bureaus to internally scan and store personal information like social security cards and birth certificates. Enforcement of Real ID has been continuously delayed because virtually all states are not in compliance. Thanks for watching. Our goal is to inform, so help us by sharing ICN with your friends and family. From all of us at Informed Citizen News, we'll see you next week.